Time for our weekly sit-down with former Marlins president David Sampson coming to us from a very sad room somewhere in Connecticut, I believe. Uh, He is the host of Nothing Personal. You can check it out. He's killing it. It's a great podcast. It's on five days a week, and you can uh, check it out wherever you get your podcast or on the DraftKings Network as well. Uh, good, Good morning to you, David. How are you? I am awesome. This room is actually not as sad as it looks. It came with a painting in the background right. that was so bad that I had to have it removed by security. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like a sad room. It's a, it really does. <laughs> Billy, sad room or no? I feel like it's probably a, a nice room. Okay. Yeah. Well, like you, you have it set up, like the computer set up like on a grand piano or something. <laughs> I have it set up. It's a two room. It's sort of like a mini suite. I'm here in Connecticut for three weeks doing postseason work for CBS. Right pre and post game work but i'll tell you when i do nothing personal i like having a great background but when i got here and set it up it was so bad that i went straight white background huh. uh billy before we get to christopher mad dog russo because david uh he wants to talk about it i do too we'll play sound in a second were you laughing at Philly's fan last night? Well, okay, so David, I don't know. Because I was. I, I spent the entire night just laughing at Philadelphia Phillies fans. I don't know. Oh, if we're you, so loud. If you caught what happened. So last time when you came on and you were criticizing the Phillies fans, like they did not like that. Like that clip <laughs> got like a lot of views. It Thank got you more, for doing that, by the way. It, yeah. it got, I think, more comments than it did likes, which is never, never great when that's the situation. But it was like a lot of people were upset, right? And I coming into the postseason, kind of seeing how things played out with the Phillies fans. I grew up, obviously, a Marlins fan. I despised the Phillies growing up. I never wanted to see them succeed. But it seemed like a fun, cool environment. I'm like, oh, you know what? Like, this seems like everybody's having a good time there. Like, it's a different environment than we're seeing in the other games. Like, I would be fine, I guess, if the Phillies went on. And then over the weekend, I don't know what happened. I feel like it was probably the Eagles game against the Dolphins where I'm like, you know what? I don't want these people to be happy. And I know that I sound like a horrible person admitting that, but I'm like, I don't want them to be happy anymore. I think it would be hilarious if they found a way to blow this. And sure enough, they did blow it. And I'm wondering if you take pleasure or delight in the fact that they did that because of the crap that you got from all, like basically the entire city of Philadelphia, just for that clip that you put out last week, where all you said was you don't think that they're a good fan base. I just didn't have them in the top five. No, the pleasure I took is that the Phillies lost. Yes. So my background in 18 years in the NL East, anytime the Phillies and Mets lose, that's a good day. Yeah. Did the Braves, the Braves didn't bother you? No, I don't. You know me. That None of that bothers me at all. And for Phillies fan base to think that they're as good as the Cardinal fan base, that's just funny to me. <laughs> but what's great is that watching the Philly fans boo and leave, I love it. When we won 20 years ago this year on the road in Wrigley, I was happier watching f- Cubs fans cry. Oh, me too. There was the old lady that was crying in the Nick Cubs hat. Yes. And I, I could Oh, I was so happy. And I felt bad because she's probably no longer with us. But every time that they <laughs> you were, were laughing, still, you can't laugh at someone and feel bad at the same time. I, I can. No, you I think can't. I can. It Put was, it on the pole, Roy. No, it, it was like, and at the time I was probably like 16 or something, right? And I remember having like a moral conundrum like, I know this doesn't make me a good person, but I'm taking so much joy in seeing all of these old people cry and devastate. Stated. <laughs> Schadenfreude. It's one of the great words of all time. It's taking pleasure at the misfortune of others. <laughs> of course, when you win on the road, as you know in sports, it's way better to win a game seven on the road than it is at home because the, when the crowd goes silent, and you saw it in Philly when they lost their game seven, you could hear a pin drop. And all I kept thinking about is the fans. And how they all had plans for the World Series and to go to these World Series games. And then, poof, it disappeared. Well, Philadelphia as a city, why should that fan base deserve anything? They booed Santa Claus, for crying out loud. That's mm. right. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, Roy. They deserve nothing. You know, in 2003, David, I, I think, well, obviously I wanted the Marlins win because I wanted the Marlins win. But there was just this, like, arrogance and, like, assumed, like, the Cubs are there and there's not even a chance that the Marlins are going to make it. Bernie Mac is there in game six, or he's calling them the champs when he's singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. That's where it all ended, had, by Where the way. he still has a game and, you know, like two innings to go. And it was just like, they're just so arrogant and feel so entitled to making it to the World Series that, like, when they were crying, it made me feel extra happy. And I remember as a child thinking, right. I'm a bad person. I'm just not a good person. No, no, that's where the series ended. 
Bernie Mac in the seventh. God rest his soul, by the way. He changed it. Yeah, not not Bartman. Too soon. Bernie Mac. Mm. David still shaking his head. Bad person, (laughs) Billy, at all for that. As a matter of fact, I think it makes you a normal person. Really? Well, you're strange, David. I mean, people have said the same about you. Your normal is not what everyone else's normal is. Okay. Wait. So you want you want an update on Russo? Because Christopher Mad Dog Russo, who was on this show last week and he crushed it. Uh, he made a bet. He actually said, he made a statement. I'm going to play it for you, David, then I'll give you an update. Here is Christopher Mad Dog Russo on what he would do if the Diamondbacks <laughs> won the series. I've been wrong in Arizona from day one. I, I, a, I'm stunned to beat Milwaukee. I thought they'd get swept by the Dodgers. I never thought they'd even go back to Philly for a game six. Uh, I'll try it one more time. I would not be stunned if they won tonight. I would be floored. floored. And I'll say this right now. Just uh, I'll say this right now. And Bob Raceman, write it down. <laughs> write it down. If they win the next two days, they win the next two games and win this series in seven games, if they win, I will, I will retire on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> He's working today, David, just so you know. Oh, he is? <laughs> yes, he is. He's working today uh, doing his normal shift, Mad Dog Radio. Uh, because he did not want to retire. It's one of those sports radio things that we do, and we say something that we don't mean. Lord knows I've done it a thousand times over the 20 years of doing this show. But they came to an agreement. Howard Stern got in the way. And so Stern said, listen, you don't have to retire, okay? But what you have to do is walk around New York City in an Arizona Diamondbacks bikini with a sign that says, I'm a douche. Whatever. <laughs> it's a cop that out. Is re- that's a joke. <laughs> you're going to rip is, Mad Dog? Is that what you're going to do? The, the fact is that when you say something like that, don't say something on the air that you're not willing to follow through. Well, I mean, it, it's, just, he's it's not good radio. It's not good anything. It, it, <laughs> he loses all credibility to me. And if you're going to say it, I figured when he said it that he had some deal in place that he was going to retire because he was old and done and didn't like it anymore. But to me, if you're going to say it, say something else. Say you'll say you'll do the show naked tomorrow. You know, anything that you can actually do. Otherwise. You're taking your audience as fools, and I don't like that. I respect the audience too much. The audience will be glued to Mad Dog Show today. Mm. I mean, it's all over. He's on first take already. It's everywhere on social media. He's already working? Yeah, he's on first take. <laughs> well, he clarified earlier, even before, saying, hey, I meant radio, not TV, and of course that's fine, but one or the other, he should have retired. <laughs> but I love the fact that he gave bulletin board material to the Diamondbacks, and they were chanting. I don't know if you have the sound of this, but during the champagne celebration, which don't get me started, everyone used goggles and they're a bunch of wimps. Oh, wow. But during the celebration, they were chanting Mad Dog, Mad Dog, Loser, Loser, <laughs> and it really incentivized the Diamondbacks when they won that Game 7. Really? Yeah. We don't have the sound for that, but that's what happened? Yeah. So if you're Mad Dog, you have to say, listen, I'm the reason the Diamondbacks won, right? I would assume Philly fans hate him more than they hate me. Wow. <laughs> no. We do have the sound. No, that's impossible, it. David. <laughs> Put it on the poll. Do Philly fans hate David Sampson more than Christopher Mad Dog Russo? Other way around. Do they hate Mad Dog more than David Sampson? Impossible. We do have the sound of that, I'm told. All right, let's play. Retire. Play it again, Roy. <laughs> he, he said lo- they said retire loser yes, yes that's right doggy's gonna love that though right david he is the fact that they did that yes so he I, I get that he loves the attention i get that it's a good story but why go with the retirement line i don't know and it's a funny thing in sports the whole bulletin board and making up reasons to get motivated that really came to the forefront during that documentary, The Last Dance, where we found out that Jordan needs to make up things, make up hatred, make up bulletin board material to motivate him. And it turns out that more players need that than you think. And uh, you should know better than to provide it. And that is what was done in the Diamondbacks. Just credit to them. And the Phillies just blew it. There's Mm -hmm. no other way to say it. Much like the Cubs did in 03, they really did blow it. David, how upset is Major League Baseball They're not going to say it. They're not going to admit it. But 
they have what I am saying is the worst World Series in the history of the sport. How upset are they today? So they are. David, no one cares. I mean, honestly, no one. Unless you're gambling or you live in Arizona or Texas, nobody cares. Nobody cares. So it's pretty. It's what I would say about some of the Thursday night matchups in, in the NFL. Unless you're doing fantasy or gambling, right. uh, what do you care about? Mm-hmm. And so MLB looks at it. Does Fox have a problem with the matchup? They'd prefer Dodgers Yankees every time, of course. Right. But at the end of the day, their advertising revenue and the way they do the cost benefit of these rights deals. It's not impacted by a random year where there's the Rangers against the Diamondbacks. That's not how the valuations go. Because under that theory, you wouldn't want the Blue Jays ever to be, even be in the postseason because in Canada, you don't get to count that down in the U, down here in the U.S. So all of that said, there's a lot of really good stories, both on the Texas side and on the Arizona side. And we're going to have a chance to learn more about these stories and these players. And during the course of the next 10 days on Nothing Personal, I'm going to highlight some of these names that you don't know, like the, the Arizona bullpen lights out a bunch of players you haven't heard of. Kevin Ginkle, who he's a guy that if he were on your team, you'd know him, love him and appreciate him. But he's been in Arizona where you don't. So things like that. Adelise Garcia, mm-hmm. his story, the way he was wanted by nobody. The Marlins could have had him. Anyone could have had him. No one wanted him. And now look at him. So there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Is this going to be his Randy or Rosarena postseason? It already is. Yeah. I mean, think about what he's done. Now, you're, you're mentioning that, and we talk about Cardinals fans. Let's talk about the Cardinals front office. Uh, Garcia and Rosarena were both Cardinal players who were let go because they weren't thriving there. And, Billy, you've always been upset and, and on the Andrew Miller and Cameron Mabin stuff. And I only point out that every team in baseball has really good players who aren't really good for them and then go somewhere else and become really good. So it's not just it wasn't just me. It's every front office out there from the best to the worst. All right. So uh, next segment, David, you will give us your top five keys to the series storylines. What are we doing here? I want to give you top five things to watch for over the course of this World Series. Okay, the worst World Series in the history of the sport. (laughs) Uh, We will do that next. We'll continue with former Marlins president David Sampson. We continue with David Sampson here. He'll give us his five storylines to watch out for in the worst World Series in the history of the sport. We will do that in a second. He is the host of Nothing Personal. There is a game we're going to play here. Uh, after your five storylines, we'll get to your movie as well, David. we got a lot to cram in in this segment here. Uh, we're not going to get to the NBA. Something tells me I know you want to talk about it. But uh, Billy is just going to throw out a name, okay, a random name. We'll do it after your five storylines. And I have to guess whether that person is on the Diamondbacks or the Rangers. Hmm. Okay? All right, we're good with that. You ought to win that game, Stu. You've heard of these players. I I assume to prepare for your shows this week, you've been watching the MLB playoffs. Prepare? Yeah. Uh. No, I watched and just rooted for Philly fans to be miserable, and I got my wish. Uh, Your five storylines, David Sampson. Go ahead. Number five, will Garcia stay hot? Which team? If you haven't watched Adelise Garcia, he is a player who won the MVP in the ALCS. He can downright rake. He is setting records left and right, and it is hard to stay hot over the period of two series. But if he does, it makes the Rangers lineup very difficult to navigate. Well, that's what we saw with Nick Castellanos. Nick Castellanos could not stay hot in the NLCS, and he hit a home run, I think, his first at bat, and then went like 0 for 21 the rest of the series. (laughs) It cost him, and he was very hot against the Braves, and and then all of a sudden he went cold. Not uncommon, but the Rangers need Garcia. Number four. How many times will the Texas Rangers bullpen implode? That's been the biggest issue with the Rangers as opposed to the Diamondbacks, whose bullpen is lights out. They've got your old friend, Aroldis Chapman, who is the guy who won the World Series with the Cubs in 16, the Yankee, the Red who used to throw 120 miles an hour, Sid Finch. Well, it turns out he's not so lights out anymore. And they've got really no one they can rely on other than their closer, Jose LeClerc. And even he has a tendency to give it up. So that's going to be something to watch for. Number three. Will Texas win its first ever World Series? 
for all the people who complain about how bad it is to be a Marlins fan, I would only point out there's been some issues in between, I grant you. Right. But in a matter of 26 years, you've got two rings. Yep. The Texas Rangers, in their entire history, have a donut. <laughs> David, I think since 97, there are like five teams in Major League Baseball who have won multiple World Series championships. The Yankees, the Braves, the Dodgers, the elite teams, and the Marlins. I mean, Not the Dodgers. <laughs> oh, really? No. Not the Dodgers. The Cardinals. It's the yeah. Giants, yes. Cardinals, yes. Red Sox. Not the Braves. Right. You There's should. one more. Okay. The, the Braves won in 21. Okay, and that's it, right? Since Not 97. The right. And the Rangers only have one pennant, right? No, they went to a back No, the Rangers World went series. to two back World back? Series. Yes, so they yeah, have two pennants. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right, number two, David Sampson. Will the Diamondbacks become the third franchise to be undefeated with multiple World Series victories? Mm. Of course, I'm going to talk about our Marlins. We're 2-0 and in the World Series. Mm -hmm. The Jays are 2-0 and in the World Series. The Diamondbacks are 1-0, and looking to go 2-0 and and become only the third team to be undefeated at 2-0 and in the World Series. David, we'll get to your number one in a second. Run differential. I don't want to hear about it again. The Diamondbacks were minus 15 this year. They're in the World Series. They're four games away from being the best team in the sport. Run differential used to be the number one stat we looked at. And we thought that around zero, you're a 500 team. And obviously, negative run differential below 500, positive run differential, you're above 500. And normally, that's the case. But look at the Marlins this year. They had a terrible negative run differential, but they were so good in one-run games that they were uh, enabled them to finish above 500 and make the playoffs. Diamondbacks, same situation. But at the end of the day, look what happened in the Philly series. The Diamondbacks lost game two by a touchdown and a field goal. I think it was 10 nothing. And then they won a game 4-2. Guess what? You're losing the run differential, but you're tied in the series. So I'm much more concerned in the playoffs about wins than losses. How much of this is because of the expanded playoffs? Well, the fact that there's two wild cards in it, the yeah. fact that more teams are in it and more fan bases are excited for longer, it's exactly what they had hoped for when they expanded the playoffs. And it will allow for more 84 wins to make the playoffs, 84 teams with 84 wins to make the playoffs, which will allow for teams with 84 wins to be in the World Series. That's just how it goes because as we all remember in this part of the country with the playoffs, you just never know who's going to get hot in October and carry that all the way to a ring. Well, last season we saw it too where the Phillies were a wild card team. They end up winning the National League. They make it to the World Series. There's been pushback, I guess, because of the expanded playoffs. And I just, and obviously as a, as you know, a fan base that would benefit from this, and you have a team that gets in because of the expanded playoffs, and they sure. could go on a run and make the World Series. I just don't buy that it's bad for the game that you have an 84-win team make it to the World Series, and you have the 100-win teams lose in the first round. I just don't buy it. So let me tell you where that comes from. That comes from the players' union. When they were at the collective bargaining table where you had to negotiate the expanded playoffs— what the union said is the reason we don't want expanded playoffs is we feel owners will not be incentivized to spend money to win a division or to raise their payroll because they know they can be average, make the playoffs by sneaking in through the back door and then get hot at the right time and get the ring, which is what the owners want. So the union was very against it. And the reason it got passed is money. And with the expanded playoffs came more broadcast revenue and it came more teams with higher revenue because more teams were in it for longer, so more local revenue, and that revenue ends up filtering down to players. So that's how the agreement came together. But it is true, if you think about it, I don't wanna spend an extra 30 million on payroll to try to win 90 when I know that I can win 85 and make the playoffs. Well, is it a, uh, did they feel the same way uh, in 94 with the original wild card? Well, that was only one, even in 03. There was three division winners and one wild card, and every team had to play in the division series. And that's the funny part you bring up. Do you remember in 03, Giants fans were furious. They won over 100 games with Bonds, and all of a sudden, four days later, they're home because we beat them three games to one. 
and there was a lot of discussion. There's got to be a bigger advantage to the number one seed. Give them more home games. Give them a lead. Make the road team win five out of four games. Just insane, insane stuff. It's baseball. It's playoffs. Sometimes a number eight seed beats a number one seed in the NBA. It's how things go. How much, uh, and I don't know, and you would know this better because it's on the business side of baseball, how much do the ratings actually matter for the World Series? Because people will complain and they say, matter oh my to God. Fox, I mean. But, but here's they my, don't. Here, that's, really? that's my question because, okay, okay good. here you go. You have Texas and they're going to play Arizona. You're like, this is going to be one of the worst rated World Series ever. These are teams nobody cares about. But it's not like they're selling the World Series this week, and it's not like they have a contract renewal at the end of the month. So how much does it actually matter? Because that money's already come in, hasn't it? Every negotiation from that the league does with its broadcast partners, it never once comes up who is in the World Series or what the matchups will be or, hey, we need make goods. If it's teams that we don't like, we want a refund or if it's teams that we do like, we're willing to pay more. It's never come up one time. The horse hockey. You're saying it is total horse <laughs> hockey, but it is a great narrative to put on Twitter and to put on do releases and MLB falls prey to it where they release stuff when the ratings are good. They'll say ratings up 14.69 percent. Of course, that could be from a bad number to a less bad number. But stop with the releases about ratings. Stop with the obsession over ratings. It's a different world than when we watched Goodbye, Farewell, Amen in 1983. It's just a different world when it comes to ratings. That is not how the networks decide what they're going to pay. We'll get to your number one here in just a second. Do you think baseball is ever going to sit down? David, if you look at the playoff games and how much excitement there is in the stadium and people watching at home and the numbers are massive, and why? Because there's urgency, because there's stakes attached to the game. Do they ever say to themselves, how do we take this and make our regular season games feel something close to what the postseason feels like. Because in the NFL, in college football, you have some of that. I'm not saying they're exactly the same, but regular season games in the NFL, 17 of them. Each one means so much. Right. In baseball, doesn't happen. Why can't they shorten the season? Well, let's say we cut it by half. How do you feel about a, a Tuesday night game in June, uh, excuse me, in, in January, when the Heat are playing and everybody's resting. You feel pretty good about that regular season game? No. And they, they've cut it down by half. They only have 82. Right. So I guess we'd have to go baseball and basketball down to 17. Of course, it's a different sport. You're not going to do that. We're not a once-a-week sport. So that's another narrative that we, we try. NBA load management was going to be one of my NBA topics. And already we get word LeBron's going to play fewer minutes. I'm sure he's going to play fewer games, as he should. He's the oldest player in the league. Yep. But at the end of the day, you can't legislate against meaningless regular season games, except they're not all that meaningless because tiebreakers happen because of them. A little nugget, if Philly had won, the reason Texas has home field advantage in the World Series is that Texas beat Philly in the first series of the season. Okay. And that's how they won the tiebreaker. So every game matters, but it's hard to get the fans engaged 81 times or, as you know, in basketball, even 41 times. Right. So, you guys, what team is Jose LeClerc on? <sighs> David mentioned him. Yeah, I just mentioned him, Stu. Hmm. Well, I have a 50-50 oh, shot on. here. Uh, the Rangers? Correct. Yeah. Yes. What, what team is Araldis Chapman? I was shocked to hear that he's still playing. Um, Chapman. I just mentioned him too, Billy. Yeah, I the know. Rangers. The, correct. Yeah. Oh, how about that? <laughs> I was trying really to see what his retention was of because they were mentioned in the exact same. Sentence. I guessed no retention. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it were strictly guesses. <laughs> uh, David Sampson's number one storyline of the worst World Series in the history of the sport is. Can it go seven? <laughs> because no matter who the opponents are. A long series gets more attention. It gets more exciting because who wouldn't watch a game seven between any two teams? And that will be the key to how we look back at the World Series. Uh, Bill, you have any more for me? Josh Jung, an all-star. So now I'm just playing the game, David. He's got two Rangers. There has to be a Diamondback somewhere eventually. Diamondbacks. No, he's oh. a Ranger. <laughs> Man. <laughs> an all-star. Really? Yeah. Jose Ruiz. Huh. So you went Diamondback. You went Ranger, Ranger, you, Diamondback. But this, you're, you're not. Ranger. No, he's a Diamondback. Yeah. 
<laughs> this is terrible. Merrill Kelly. Mm. It's a starters to God. Really? Yeah. yeah. There's no real starters these days except for Verlander. What does uh, that even mean? I don't know. He's right about that. Of course. Thank you, Tom. He's right about that. We have openers it. now. Yeah. Um, Diamondback. He is a Diamondback. Yes! Yeah. I know my baseball. <laughs> Last one. Evan Longoria. Ooh. Still playing? Yeah. <laughs> Longo. <laughs> what about him? What team is he on? Uh, Rangers. Oh, God. <laughs> Andrew Hayden. See you later, guys. Diamondbacks are going to crush him. <laughs> Nothing personal. David Sampson. Check it out wherever you get your podcast. Thank you, David. We'll talk movies next week. All right. <laughs>